finishing that they cover the lead coarse material with fine alloy that is called jacketing it will smoothen the surface so it will offer less resistance similarly rifling rifling is when you engrave the spiral grooves in the barrel they give the spin to the bullet circular motion so this also reduces the air resistance so these are the factors with which we can overcome the air resistance that is called as ballistic coefficient now the other atypical phenomena which is shown by the bullet is the tail wag that is the tail the tail wags it is unstable and the tail wags and this tail phenomena may be of three types the initial tail wag initial tail wag mean the bullet become unstable when it leaves the barrel then intermediate tail wag that when it travels in the medium because of the negative forces the bullet again becomes unstable it if it passes in through another medium the water or the glass it will again become unstable that is the intermediate tail wag and then the terminal that after traveling for a longer distance when the velocity is reduced the bullet will again unstable so its classical example is given by the spinning top when you spin a top jab aap ek lattu chalate hain when you spin it off initially it becomes unstable it wobbles it wags but in the middle it becomes steady but in the end when again the velocity is reduced it becomes unstable it wags again so the bullet will show the initial tail wag the intermediate tail wag and the terminal tail wag why the initial tail wag because when the bullet is traveling within the barrel it is supported by the walls of the barrel and when it leaves the barrel the lateral support by the wall of the barrel will be lost and air resistance and gravity they are other negative factors so the let by losing the lateral support by air resistance and gravity the bullet will become unstable and this instability after the exiting through the barrel is known as tail wag which is initial tail wag and then after traveling some time it will again assume a balance and a steady flight and the wag will be lost then intermediate tail wag when the bullet will be traveling through another medium it will again become unstable and it will wag like it travel through water to glass or through metal it will become unstable bullet traveling through a glass then the terminal wag tail wag this is instability or wag due to reduction in the velocity when the bullet has traveled for a certain period of time there will be reduction in the velocity and it will become unstable that is called as terminal tail wag so the medical legal importance of this terminal tail wag is important for a forensic point of view because this will produce a typical type of empty wounds the typical empty wounds are circular or oval with collar of abrasion a typical description but they will become a typical showing a typical that right? the empty wound may be bigger it may be cross shaped or keyhole type or sometime the bullet may be fragmented through travel into other medium the glass or the metal and the multiple pieces will be striking and there may be multiple empty points so ter terminally if the velocity has been reduced so low that it only lodges skin deep or muscle deep it does not have tremendous energy energy to import the tissue to cause a big cavity or fracture or travel through the body so it only lodges skin deep or muscle deep so these are various atypical wounds which are medically legally important when the terminal tail wag is showing So this is a lateral impact and a keyhole type of empty wound. The bullet has reduced its velocity and striking laterally and producing a keyhole type injury. 
Now, this was all about the uh, intermediate ballistics, now the terminal ballistics. That is the wound ballistics, which is most important for forensic point of view. The terminal ballistics is the study of the wound. So the firearm wound, this is called as a special trauma, special form of trauma, because it will show whole type of forensic medicine, whole forensic traumatology will be visible because there is flame which, 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 will, which will cause burning, there will be smoke, there will be carbon particles, there will be metal particles, there will be shock waves or compression waves which will be traveling along the bullet. So it will produce a special trauma. So firearm wounds are called a special trauma because besides producing breach in the body, the pellets will be having further charge, the gunpowder, the metal shaving, the lubricant or the shock wave, which will also have an effect on the body. The firearm wounds are called having a special trauma. So it is concerned with the effects of bullet on the target at impact until it comes to rest. That is wound ballistics. So the mechanism of wound production, it causes laceration and crushing by imparting energy to the tissue because the bullet is traveling at high speed. When it strikes the tissues, the energy which is within the bullet will be transferred to the tissues and the tissues will, be, will start traveling with the same speed of the bullet. They will be moving forward and outward, hence by causing extensive laceration and crushing. Then beside this bullet itself, there will be shock waves will be traveling along the bullet and they will be having a wider span not the circular or the uh, oval lacerated wound, but the shock will be producing, shock waves will be producing a larger sphere damage, more distant damage. And then the matter of high velocity bullet, the high velocity bullet having tremendous amount of energy and the tissues will be traveling, start traveling with the so much high energy that a big cavity will be seen underneath the anti wound. So just by looking at the anti wound, having a big cavity underneath, determine that this is a high velocity bullet. So these are various mechanisms involved in the wound production. So the laceration and crushing, when we study the kinematics, this is the study of the physical forces. In gunshot wounds, we can use this to determine the extent of injury from the forces and the motion involved. Because with the knowledge of the physics, we know the velocity is the key factor in overall wound production. Because we can very well know that kinetic energy is directly proportional to mass, half the mass and square root of the velocity. So that's why a small bullet with its tremendous velocity produce abundant damage and enormous damage than a brick having a much larger mass than the bullet. So the velocity plays a key role. So doubling the mass will double the energy, whereas the doubling the velocity will quadruple the four times the energy. And that's what I was telling you that a small caliber bullet traveling at high speed can produce a more extensive injury than a large caliber bullet traveling at lower speed. So speed is important. The high velocity will bullet will be producing enormous gravitational effect, whereas low velocity will be producing less. And similarly, when the, we compare the bullet with the brick, we can very well know that the brick is having much larger mass but producing less damage than the bullet. Then the laceration crushing which we have discussed will be depending upon the missile velocity, the shape of the projectile, the angle of impact and the flight 
and other characteristics which we have discussed like atypical movements, yaw, tumbling, and nutrition. So these all factors will change the appearance, will change the laceration and crushing, or the bullet may be fragmented if it has been passed with, with, with an intermediary part, say the gun uh, with the glass or the metal, it can be fragmented and we will cause multiple anti, anti uh, injuries. So these are various atypical movement which I have discussed already. This is a brief movie will be shown. You can see that how, how enormous damage can a bullet cause depend with the speed of the bullet. So this is also very important that the shock waves which have been traveling with the bullet and the bullet is traveling with so much tremendous speed. Similarly, the shock wave will be having so much speed and they will be entering into the tissues with a larger speed. So that is the reason that the shock wave will cause rupturing of a distant organ. The bullet will be striking at chest, but the urinary bladder can be ruptured with uh, these shock waves. And this is a diagrammatic representation showing the shock waves. This is another movie, Small will be showing you how the shock waves are traveling. You can see the bullet emitting out of the muzzle end. And these are these shock waves which were circumferentially traveling with the bullet. You can see the shock waves which are traveling with the bullet. So the cavitational effect is because of the high velocity bullets. When they will be traveling at high speed, they will cause cavitational effect. So the size and shape depends upon the capacity of the bullet to disperse energy to the tissues. So the cavitational effect is because of the energy imparted to the tissues. And the energy which is imparted to the tissue, the tissue will be start traveling in forward and outward manner. And they will suck in air at the empty site. And the actual cavity can be 30 times greater than the size of the bullet. And after the Recoil, the cavity will be less than the actual cavity which was generated by the bullet. This is a gel model diagrammatic representation showing various types of cavitational effects. With the effect of cavitation, it will cause the outward movement of the 